Hello everyone, it's Kyle from Wilbur's Wildlife here in our next video to introduce you guys to reptiles. And so today we're going to be talking about what makes the reptile group unique and what features they all share and also the different types of reptiles that there are. So reptiles are really common animals, they're one of the main animals that we use in our shows. So we have snakes and lizards and turtles and also crocodiles occasionally that we use in our shows. And what they all share in common, the main thing is that they have scales, which are hard um, out of body coverings that are made out of keratin. It's the same stuff as your fingernails. And for the most part, they're there to protect the reptile from anything that may want to harm them. And so that's their outer body covering. The other thing that all reptiles have in common is that they are ectothermic animals. Now, it's a bit of a big word. Most people know them as cold-blooded animals. It means similar things. So... The reason we've swapped over to the term ectothermic now is because those animals, their blood isn't cold all the time. So during the day when they're out in the sun, they're moving around, they're going to warm up to the same temperature as you or I. And that is essential for their digestive system. So their digestive system doesn't kick in and start producing energy and processing the food that's in their stomach if they're too cold. But they can't generate body heat through internal processes like we can to keep their body at a constant temperature. They've got to generate that heat from sitting in the sun. Whereas humans, um, other mammals and birds, we are endothermic animals. We're animals that can generate our own heat through our own body processes. And that means that we are able to not have to sit in the sun effectively for three or four hours every morning warming up like your ectotherms are. So ectotherms are... So reptiles, amphibians and invertebrates are all examples of ectothermic animals, animals that need to generate their heat from an external source and at the same temperature as their outside environment. Within the reptile group, we have five major sort of subgroups that we loosely define them into that helps just with a little bit of grouping and stuff like that. And so those are snakes, lizards, turtles and tortoises, crocodilians and tuatars. So snakes are in the same group as lizards and so they use the characteristics of each other to define what makes them different and why these two snakes are animals that have got no legs there's no snake that we know of that has legs they don't have a movable eyelid so they're not able to close their eyes when they go to sleep they instead sleep with their eyes open and they have a scale that covers over their eye and is shed with the rest of their scales to protect the eye and they have got no external ear. So instead of hearing noise coming through the air like we do, um, such as our voice, these guys pick up vibrations through the ground. Now lizards are defined using those three characteristics for snakes because they all have at least one of those three characteristics. So if you come across a lizard, it's either going to have legs, though that's not true for all lizards. There's legless lizards which don't have legs. We have those here in South Australia and across much of the rest of Australia. They have got an external ear opening in most cases, so that's why legless lizards are still placed in the lizard group even though they have no legs, is because they have that external ear. And then they also have a movable eyelid for the, for, for the most part. There is an exception to that in geckos, which are lizards, once again, external eye, um, ear opening and have legs, but no eyelids, so they still get to be lizards. So your lizard group is made up of monitors, dragons, iguanas, um, all those sorts of things. So lots of different um, reptiles going to be coming under the lizard group. And then we have turtles and tortoises, which are a group that are put together because they all have a shell. And so that nice hard shell on the back protects them from predators. Your turtles and tortoises are obviously separated out once again into subgroups because they, um, the turtles live on land and in water. They can go between both fairly easily. Tortoises are much more made for land. It's where they're going to spend most of their time. But tortoises can still swim. So they have been known, especially the giant tortoises, to move between islands. After turtles and tortoises, we've got crocodilians. Now, crocodilians are ancient reptiles. have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. And they are very similar to lizards in a lot of ways. They have legs, they have movable eyelids, and they have an external ear. But they're semi-aquatic for the most part. And so these guys move between land and between water fairly easily. Obviously, a lot of crocodiles spend a lot of their day in the water, and that's where they do most of their hunting. 
Now they're called crocodilians because they have got the crocodiles in that group. So thinking freshwater and saltwater crocodiles like we have here in Australia. Then you've also got uh, garules and you've got alligators such as the American alligator that you see at zoos here in Australia and caiman which come mostly from South America. So there's all your different crocodilians, they get their own little group. Finally, tuataras are once again a really unique species and it's the name of the group as well as the only animal within it. So this is a single species grouping. Tuataras are just so unique that they get their own group. They've been around since before the dinosaurs, been around for a really long time, developed some really weird characteristics about them that just deserve their own group. So they're a lizard that comes from New Zealand. There is one in Australia at Taronga Zoo. There's, so they are found in some zoos around the world as well. You know, the only place you'll find them naturally is New Zealand. Now that's all our five different groups of reptiles. So we hope you've enjoyed learning about reptiles in our video today. So reptiles sum up are animals that are ectothermic. They rely on um, external factors for their heat. They're not able to generate their own body heat like we are. They're animals that have scales covering their body and they're further subdivided down into five groups. So turtles and tortoises, lizards, snakes, crocodilians and tuataras. If you had a great time learning about reptiles, check out our worksheet down below if you're interested in a little bit more reptile learning. And we hope you'll join us for more videos here on the Wilder's Wildlife Channel soon.